Um, morning, everyone. Um, my name is Martin Strawbridge, and I'm Deputy CNIO at the Somerset NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, my, my background is a specialist nurse in cardiology, um, and my role in the digital program is to provide clinical and nursing oversight uh, to the delivery of clinical systems at our organisation. Uh, my colleague Mark Hunt will be co-presenting with me today, and he is our IT development manager for the Trust. Um, so we're looking to talk to you today about our COVID-19 rapid response um, and open data platform approach. Uh, next slide, please. So just to give you a bit of background to our trust, um, NHS Foundation Trust, um, some say NHS Foundation Trust is one of a few trusts nationally to have merged its acute community and mental health services. Um, our acute hospital is the largest district general hospital in Somerset with a bed capacity of 630 acute beds and 15 operating theatres. Uh, we also have a further 325 beds across our community and mental health settings. Um, last year, we recorded approximately 97,000 acute admissions and 75,000 ED attendances. And our acute hospital is also an NHS global digital exemplar site. Next slide, please. So just to give you an overview of the, our challenges during COVID-19, Primarily, our challenge from a business perspective uh, was an introduction of a clinical and operational risk in the form of COVID-19. Um, this risk had the potential to bring with it acute pressure on our bed capacity and direct clinical risk to patients and staff in terms of the potential for nosocomial transmissions. So this poses a question to us, um, how do we go about coordinating our care, optimising our bed capacity and critical care capacity during such a pandemic? So as a digital program, our challenge was to build at pace a useful tool set to support this clinical work, keep staff safe, maximise our bed capacity and monitor clinical data such as oxygen requirements within our organisation. Uh, next slide, please. So what do we do? Um, the principles to our approach to this challenge was an agile co-design process, which was essentially a collaboration between our digital teams and clinicians with an ethos of iterating at pace. Um, we looked to develop a spectrum of tools that would cover direct care, patient follow-up and operational oversight. Our primary focus from a front line was to fit in with existing flows or introduce a flow that was value adding and required zero to low training requirements. Um, the key to the success of this approach was to collaborate with small groups of clinicians in order to maintain a focus on producing editing prototypes with a 24 hour turnaround on iterations or in some instances even less than this. Um, we very much adopted an appetite to fail fast in this process, and we were okay with that because this failure came at low cost to the organisation. However, if successful, would bring massive benefit. Um, the solution was integrated into our trust portal, the Better Platform, which was already being utilised as part of our EPMA solution. And we focused very much on a continual improvement, and this solution was taken from start to finish in approximately two and a half weeks. Um, we now want to share um, a short video clip with you that steps you through some of the solutions that we have designed and implemented. And there's some cameo appearances in this video from Tom Edwards, our associate CCIO, and Barney Kyle, who is one of our ICU consultants. Um, so if you could play the video, please, Karis. We have a hybrid uh, IT environment. Uh, which is a synthesis of a number of uh, uh, systems uh, from different vendors. And we needed a way of bringing data from all of those different vendors into a single point to enable rapid decision making and con with complete information available uh, by the clinicians. We have a team of specialist nurses that are providing the uh, results notification. We have a, uh, a team of research nurses um, who have been repurposed from their usual trials activity, who are now using uh, our data collection tools. And then our intensive care unit has uh, scaled and uh, utilized um, our uh, dashboard tools um, for the care of uh, their extended bed base and uh, every clinician in that environment is using the tool, um, both nursing and uh, medical staff. We'll start with the discharge results notification team. This gave us uh, a system by which we could be confident that we had the full set of patients that had been swapped 
who had been admitted, who had not yet been provided their results. Um, we had all of their results immediately to hand uh, and we could notify them and then mark, them at, mark that task as complete in real time for vast numbers of patients, as you could imagine. Uh, for the research team, this provides us as a means for capturing data items that were not captured but were required either through the uh, trials or through the national uh, uh, reporting uh, uh, tools um, uh, in, in a way that would have otherwise required many uh, uh, pairs of hands and boots on the floor going from ward to ward, patient to patient in an environment where we were trying to minimize face-to-face um, uh, -face contact as much as possible. So this uh, enabled, but also um, kept uh, staff in a safe, in, in, safe in a way that wouldn't have been possible without this system. And then finally, the intensive care team have uh, used this to uh, provide an invaluable oversight tool um, of uh, uh, their expected uh, large number of patients. Uh, it enables them to work in an MPT environment, um, certainly with social distancing and also remotely. So for us, OpenAHR is a mature standard which allows us to focus really on data model and user interaction with data and providing developments that can go directly into the hands of users. It means that we can spend a lot more time with the users delivering what they need instead of developing database structures objects in classes within JavaScript, C++, whatever our language choose to be. So um, it, it allows us to prototype a lot quicker. Also, um, the end-to-end -end process of getting an idea um, is significantly re reduced with the better tooling, um, which is a low code approach to rapid development, uh, which is really, really good. Um, a lot of the team have expertise across the healthcare setting, um, and it's really useful for them to work with the users and share that knowledge and share ideas instead of being stuck developing classes in code. As sort of time progressed and we, we had sort of new information, we were then able to pretty rapidly um, drop drop things into place um, to, to capture those other other bits of data. Um, uh, so you know we, we sort of worked remotely with uh, with the team um, and they sort of add in add in various things to the form and then they'd come back to me and we'd, we'd sort of review them and then and then go back. But it was a, it was a very straightforward and fair and rapid process and and um you know to, to get something like that up and running and to be able to 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 sort of tweak it and perfect it in in such a um straightforward fashion was fantastic you know it was it was it was a it was a pretty pretty easy process really so so, my, so myself uh as the sort of the clinical side we had um so, so Dave Chalkley was sort of was, was sort of coordinating things, and then we had I think it was Julian and Mark doing the te technical stuff of, of the actual form, and then we had David Blackwell doing the, um, the sort of data processing on the board, sort of data capture on the back of it. So, so I guess what's that four, four, yeah, four or five sort of parts of that team, but then we had sort of a, a bit of input from, uh, so for example, for our data cap, uh, sort of data um submission team to say well, what you know what information is that you need how how can you how can we best present that to you um you know um, and you know what's yeah you know, what's the exact nature of that bit of data so they we had some input from them as well um but it was that sort of interpretation of you know what what the different requirements from those different groups were and and um you know working together and working how that could go into the form and it it all, it all worked pretty well. We, you know, we managed to sort of come up with solutions to, to all those things. Hi, all. Um, so, yeah, as Martin introduced, I'm Mark Hunt, the IT development manager here at um, what used to be Taunton and Somerset, but now is Somerset Foundation Trust. Um, so, just to give you a bit of a background of 
where we've come from a technology point of view uh, and what enabled us to be able to re react quite fast during this time. Um, so the trust is a history of best of suite systems, but even though we've chosen or tried to choose the best of suite systems, we've not always had open access to the data. Um, and we knew as going forward as a digital exemplar, we, we had to change that. And the procurement of the EPMA solution gave us the opportunity not only to buy um, a really good EPMA solution, but actually it was built on an open EHR platform, which from a technical point of view, um, we could see could be really powerful in regards to building a clinical data repository and really take our digital eco ecosystem to a new level. Um, we've New technologies, there's always critics. It's a completely different way um, of doing things, um, not just buying a point solution, but buying a solution that enables future development. So, but through forward thinking clinical and technical team, um, we managed to convince the organization to take a leap of faith. Um, so we set about implementing the solution as part of the EPMA deployment. Um, so from that, that's in, given us a good platform um, to build upon. Um, and with that, what we've been able to do, as Martin was saying, is actually use the data repository to capture data, um, use the tooling around it to build assessment forms and other solutions really, really quickly. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go into some of that a little bit more detail. So if we have the next slide, please. Um, so this gives you an overview of our ecosystem that is part of what historically has really been the acute side of the organization. Um, but as we've now merged as an organization, we will be taking forward um, out to the, to the wider organization. Um, so at the core in the middle there, um, we have our trust integration engine um, that talks all the common languages, HL7, Fire, JSON, custom APIs, etc. Um, and that's really key for continuously exchanging data. Um, not with well, the yeah. char um, system. There we go. Um, not with just the open EHR system, but all of our other systems that are included within this ecosystem. Uh, on the left hand side, we've got our best of breed clinical systems. Um, that's not all of them. That's just some of the key ones. Uh, I think one of the ones that I will call out here is patient track. So patient track is an observation system. It, it does do other things as well, um, but we've implemented it for observation. And the rollout of that actually began at the beginning of the year um, and then COVID struck and it was it was a decision point of how do we stop that or do actually we continue to roll forward with that um, and the organisation took the decision that having observation data was really important so we rolled that out that is now live across the organisation um, and we're able to pull that data into the platform. So. Um, Better portal is, is what I refer to is the clinical cockpit. Um, so that's where we're trying to drive initial clinician viewpoint of data and then from there branch out into those specialist systems where they, where it's appropriate to do so. Um, as you saw on one of the slides earlier, so we implemented Power BI. Um, it was a tool that we had available. It was something that um, we had skill set for, so it was um, just the right choice for us. On the right hand side, um, you can find that's really about our wider integration. So we've got the Somerset Integrated Digital Electronic Record, um, referred to as CIDA. We've got the Mental and Community Systems, which now as part of the merger, we're actually um, starting to pull that data into the platform, as well as some of the other national systems like GP Connect, Mesh, et cetera. Um, I think just from a technical point of view, 
um, my final point really is clinical services change. Open the HR platforms and solutions within our ecosystem do not just directly provide an answer to the clinical needs today. They enable the ability to provide solutions for today, tomorrow, and future needs. And I think from a technology point of view, that's really key. And um, yeah, so just from uh, learnings and what we need to be able to do going forward, um, obviously we've got a highly flexible, capable platform there from a technology point of view. Uh, and kind of the theme for today, really, um, we've also recognised, and that's the ability to prototype fast, fail, and iterate directly with clinical people um, and technical people, and just bring those teams together directly um, working together. Um, one of the stats that we have, we had 83 iterations of one of the solutions in 48 hours, which is really, really high, but that was due to that direct engagement. And those are the, that's the sort of thing that we want to take forward. Um, we are very, we are, we've been clinically led um, for quite a while as a digital program, um, but there's further recognition that actually, you know, that direct integration of clinical roles within the digital program is really important. Um, and we've also learned that, you know, we're not just producing desktop solutions, we need to produce mobile solutions and actually put the tools directly in front of the clinicians in line with their processes, not trying to build their processes around um, digital solutions. Um, and really, we hope that this will uh, accelerate our transfer transformation journey um, as we come towards the end of the digital exemplar program. But from our point of view, that's not the end. We've still got a lot of work that we need to do. Next slide, please.